good morning, everyone. It's Monday, kind of overcast, uh, but it's getting, t this is the last week of uh, April, wow. That it is. So we have a super exciting topic, which is really um, accurate, is happening uh, in today's market here in Los Angeles. How to win a, a bidding war. So basically, Absolutely. if you have multiple offers, what steps you as a buyer uh, with your agent need to do to win it or hopefully do your very, very best to win the, the bidding war. So yeah, it's so not the just market, win the bidding war, it's, it's how to make sure you, you're strategic. It's not just putting an offer across, it's figuring out and thinking through how do you win this deal? If you want it, how do you get it? Exactly. So and really try price range in the million to two million dollar range is definitely multiple offers and the market is actually crazy in that price range. I think definitely obviously if you go to the five plus million, it's much less competition. But um, if you are actively in the market, I'm sure you experience in this price range crazy amount of bidding wars and multiple offers and disappointments right. and frustration. And it's hard. It's definitely hard. I mean, we do this all the time, so we kind of get used to it. And how many deals don't work out that we write offers on? And there's, I'm asking you this for a reason. Yeah. Probably more than half don't work out. And there's a reason they don't work out. Our clients don't listen to us. Right. So <laughs> here are the points. Oh, you have a list written. Yes, oh, look at you. I oh, have my. a list written. I actually have 11 points, but a buyer need to follow and um, I think need to do before you get into the market and start, you know, uh, making offers on multiple offer situations. Right. So big picture, everything we do should be from um, like a 10,000, you, you go from like maybe 10,000 feet above the offer. And then as you dig into the offer with your agent, you start looking at the details. And you can't just use the price on Zillow to calculate how much you should offer. That's one of 20 factors, right? Yeah. And I know you'll talk about that. But yeah. So our summary so is, we're going to tell people how the window deal, right? Yes. Talk, and if you follow these steps, you have definitely the highest chance, if not the chance to, to actually get it even in your first try. Right. So today we're talking to those of you who have agents or don't have agents looking to buy real estate or and in the also process for, of real for estate. For agents, I mean, agent, agents definitely get uh, ideas from this as well. So number one, you need to be motivated to make it happen. That's right. number one. That's purely actually almost one of the biggest keys in this process that you need to be motivated. Right. You're not just say like, hey, I'm going to start, you know, writing the offers and see what happens. No, you need to be truly motivated to make it happen and do your very best in everything in life. Right. Number two is, well, this is really important. Uh, and it's, it's, huh? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I love numbers. I'm a numbers girl. I, uh, I definitely follow uh, the trends and I think every agent should follow the trends, meaning that you're looking at the MLS pretty much right. every second of the day. So you need to know the competition and the comps. Right, but that's, 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 a, whole, that's a secondary conversation almost in that your agent, mm -hmm. I'm not going off topic, I swear, mm -hmm. your agent needs to know the market you're, right. you're trying to so buy in. So is what I have to say. Oh, you're Your ahead of me again. agents needs to so here here is the immediate competition. It's not just like hey, what's sold in the last few months? No, the exact moment of time. Right. So for instance, I'm picking a neighborhood, North Redondo Beach in the South Bay. Average home price is in the million dollar range, million million one. Depends on obviously the square footage, right. front units, three bedroom, four bedroom, age. So you follow yeah. the trend, right? Then when you are ready to jump into the market, you need to know exactly at that moment of time what's sold uh, and what is in escrow, which means that your agent can follow up with those agents who put homes in escrow already right. and need to know the story, what's behind that um, uh, transaction, how many offers they had, roughly the price range. Usually agents don't like to disclose the exact price, right? right? But they can tell you the range. Okay, it went above twenty thousand above. And the reason, 5, the reason, above. right? People don't want to disclose how much the home sold for, or how much it went into escrow for. Mm -hmm. Is should it fall out of escrow, you don't want to minimize the next offer. Exactly. Right. So the goal is to try and keep every offer unique. And exactly. So think about it. If you know exactly 
that in the last few weeks, three homes around your particular subject property went into escrow, which are right. really similar to your subject, and it's sold for a million twenty-five. Then most likely that's gonna be your. So when Diana, the appraiser, says subject, she means the house you love. The house yes. you love is a the buyer. The house you love. Right. Million twenty-five. Then most likely this particular subject house is gonna go for that price right. or above because. If your agent, think about it, if your agent asks how many offers they had, let's say they had four offers and obviously one got accepted. So three buyers are going to make this offer on right. this subject property as well. So you already know, right? Right. That you're going to beat out three, minimum three other buyers. Right. And the funniest so thing always is you know as a listing agent, so it's our listing, mm -hmm. we know if I know four offers are coming in, mm -hmm. I know one of them I can throw away because it's some ridiculously weird offer. So, yes. Is that my, am I getting to your 11 points yes. here? Sorry. So number okay. three, number three is, um, so everybody got that point, right? So you need to know the exact competition. You need to know what is the trend, the exact uh, trend uh, in the immediate area. Then uh, financially, you need to be ready. You need to have a local uh, pre-approval, pre-qualification letter. Okay, That's when you say local, what do you mean by local, Diana? Let's well, talk about... Think? Let's so talk about what's means, important here. So, for instance, we have many in the South Bay of Los Angeles, you know, south of uh, LAX. Uh, it's a little bit different world. It's a bubble. And a lot of people uh, moving here from the West Side. The school right. system here is obviously amazing. Right. So, uh, a lot of people move here from the West Side. So, I personally like to have, uh, to see, when you have, especially when you have competition, a pre-approval letter from somebody local, a local lender right. or a so, bank, but, but, which right. is so, respected Right, bank. the most thing we want to see, that I want to see, is a local direct lender. Mm -hmm. And what is that? A local direct lender is Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo, um, Union Bank. Those are the local direct lenders. Or a broker, but it should be local. Right, and if they're a local broker, they need to be a broker that everyone knows who has a proven track record. Because think of the... the the responsibility on the listing agent. Huge. An offer comes in that's from Joe Blow lender. So no, no, no. Perfect example. We just got an offer on a property uh, in uh, last week. Right. It was from BetterRate.com. Which is a legitimate <laughs> online. Uh, right. Yeah, They're legitimate, I but mean, there's no one for me to call and have a conversation with. There's no one for me to zero to say really what's going on here. And what's important to us as listing agents is I want to be able to pick the phone up and find out. How legitimate is this buyer? Exactly. The letter, a piece of paper, well, in this case, a piece of digital paper we get that says, hey, this buyer can buy the home, really means nothing to me. It's nothing, yeah. But when I see a letter come through from a local quality lender that we all know in the community, mm -hmm. it has weight. If, you know, if, if my guy at Wells Fargo says this guy can buy a home or this woman can buy a home, I trust it. But when it comes from better rate and it's a letter, I don't know. But it's not just that. So if I have four offers on the table and I have somebody from West Fargo and uh, I look at the offer, it looks pretty good. And I say, oh, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm excited to work with this. So first of all, let, let's go back to the basics. The listing agent has a huge influence on which offer is going to be accepted Absolutely. at the end of the day. So that's also, that's probably should be number two point. Right. That uh, the listing, listing agent agents. is is the key, one of the major key points in the decision making Absolutely. process because you're influencing your seller. So uh, going back to the financials. So when you have a direct uh, lender, you have a person to call. I am in, in the process of multi countering whatever. I call up that lender and say, look, if we go above this price for a million bucks, can actually this buyer buy this house if they're really, really wanting it to, like for a million twenty-five, right. a million fifty, right? Because most likely the letter what you're gonna present is for that price you made the initial offer on. So that's very important to to know who right. you are facing with, and you're gonna right. be in escrow for thirty plus days. You need to know who does the financing. Well, you know, we we had a deal in in the last six months that looked pretty good, and it was not with a bank. It was with a um, mortgage broker we didn't know, not local, and we went with it for a number of reasons that we probably shouldn't have. Mm. The deal didn't work out, and we had no control over it. We had no access to that lender, and um, you know it makes us look bad as agents. It makes um, the the other agents who represented the buyer look bad, and it makes all of us look bad because 
it wasn't the right information. Exactly. And the so problem is so easily water. solved. Yeah. And most banks today, direct banks, have the best rates available. They will beat out almost unilaterally any mortgage broker today. Now, this could swing in the past five, six years ago. The mortgage brokers beat out all the banks. Yes. And in that case, we pushed all the business to the mortgage brokers. That's why the financial crisis happened. Well, yeah, then the financial crisis happened. <laughs> but the, they had the best money, right? The cheapest money you could get to rent to, to buy a home was the mortgage broker. Yeah. Substantially less money. Today, yeah. it's the banks. So our number one, you know, not number one, I don't know your number, super duper important to make sure you use a qualified local lender. Don't, don't just pull your friend from high school out of your hat and say, oh, here's who I'm going to use. It matters a tremendous amount. Exactly. And what I'm sorry, you started to say, we as listing agents, if I have two similar offers in my hand, and of those offers, um, one of them is Bank of America, and one of them is Joe Blow in Calabasas. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they're the same offer. Who am I going to probably push the deal towards? I'm going to do one of two things. I'm either going to push the deal towards the Bank of America mm -hmm. side, or if I like, for some reason, the other deal better, I'm going to require them um, to cross apply with my Bank of America rep or someone I like as a direct lender. Exactly. So again, I have a qualified voice who will speak to me about that buyer, whether or not they really are qualified to buy a home. We don't want finances. It's super important right. part of the equation. Okay, on with your list, young lady. Number four, you as a buyer, you need to write uh, definitely a nice, comprehensive, uh, I would say a killer letter about you, your family, why you want this home. Include a picture. You can easily be touchy, feely, emotional, because I think you know you putting um, uh, a story behind your offer. Right. And when you have multiple offers, sellers who live in uh, live in that house for let's say many years, they have memories and they right. want to kind of sell the house to somebody who would carry those memories and who would uh, you know make new memories in the the house the way how they did memories right. so i think a letter is super duper important absolutely and it shows that you're really wanting it you uh you are motivated and you do everything in your power right to, so any, to get any this house what would you include in that letter what are the things you talk about you talk about the you know first of all you're going to talk about a little bit about who you are uh, your family uh, and you know, if you are moving to this neighborhood because of uh, uh, the schools, then you're right. talking about you know why the schools are super important and why you love the schools. You're talking about the community, maybe the street, um, or you know, features you in love, the house, and then features in the house. Right. You're gonna just maybe a few lines. I mean, I'm not saying you need to go overboard, it's but you're just gonna say, you know, you love the renovation you've done. I love the colors. I love the the layout. But whatever it is, just you know, make it right. kind of. Uh, uh, you know, personal. Right. So, so that's then, super important. Right. And what we do, and we are on the other side helping a buyer, uh -huh. we actually put that letter as part of the package we send over as one PDF. Yes. Some agents will put that letter separate, and you don't know for sure if that letter actually makes its way to the. Oh, absolutely. Seller. That's also a big trick. Uh, what uh, what we have, and the, and the next point I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, the offer itself. Make it as one PDF. So it's easy for everybody to kind of forward, um, so the listing agent can right. forward it to the sellers very easily, and um, you know every important information needs to be there. Right, and these are things you could, you know, it, it doesn't happen often, but you could actually ask your agent to send you what they're sending to the agent. Yeah, beforehand. the CC everybody. Yeah, that's right. Some agents won't BCC. like that. They don't want. Yeah. You know, their job is to help you, and that they don't maybe want the oversight. Yeah. But you can ask them about it. How are they? How are they giving yeah. the offer to the? They can BCC you easily. Right. So number five, um, that's that's definitely an extra mile. So go and meet the listing agent on an open house. Right. I think when I know that I list a house, which is most likely going to have multiple offers, just like this weekend. So I had an hour to do an, an open house in a property that is tenant occupied. And our listing. Our listing, yeah. And I had about. 15 or 17 groups tremendous seriously there was a line <laughs> and uh, personally i love putting a face um in front of a name right so and if you are you know chatty if you're nice you know you build kind of a nice rapport uh, with the listing agent and your open house if you have an agent who is not local 
or uh, you know you're moving out uh, from the area right. the agent should be with you so you can meet the listing agent right. because that's the end of the day again it's relationship well think it's about that the biggest turnoff we, one of the biggest turnoffs besides a horribly written offer is when the agent hasn't seen the property mm -hmm. hasn't called you and the offer just shows up yeah it's like who is this where does this come from why is have that, no relationship who, who, right? what is this from space right <laughs> we have yeah. no relationship we don't know who they are and in the absence of other offers we work with it but if there are multiple offers, yeah. that offer gets, gets the like, lower I, I don't even know who these people are right. or what's the story. Because don't forget it, the end of the day, when you have a presentation to the seller, when you collect all your offers right. uh, who came in, you organize them, you outline which one needs to be blah, blah, blah. You as a listing agent also need to say, uh, create a story and, and, and sell the story to the seller and advise the seller that look, I know this agent. I've done many deals with this, um, you know, person is or or this agent is horrible. So, for instance, <laughs> we hope a they don't months say that very ago, often. a month ago, we had multiple offers, and we hundred percent drove the transaction to the agent who we like working with because the other agent is a very unliked agent um, in the community. That's just the bottom line. Right. So. Um, it's very important that you build some. So if you have a chance to, to but that also to means that, house. that. But what you're missing, that, uh -huh. what you're saying, Diana, Diana, <laughs> what you're saying is when you are hiring an agent to work with, uh -huh. you, Mister Home Buyer, you need to make sure the agent you're working with is someone who is liked in the community because you might lose your deal. Oh, because 100%. Of the agent, and not because so of your money, not because important. of your offer, not because of your letter, but because that agent is controversial. Absolutely. Or in this case, you know, we have many discount brokerages in the neighborhood and usually those agents <laughs> are not known meaning that we have no clue who they are and so they send the clients usually for the you know the open houses hey go and check this out or that right. one out and then the offer shows up obviously we know the brokerage right but i have no clue who this agent is i have no idea no what we're guaranteed never talk to this what agent. we're guaranteed as listing agents <laughs> is heartache we're guaranteed headache we're guaranteed all the aches, stomach ache, every stress ache yes, from those agents be because yeah. they've chosen to work in that, well, I'll use your fingers, the discount model uh -huh. because they didn't cut it in the traditional real estate model. Right. And that's not good or bad. It's just different, right? I mean, it could work, and I'm not saying that. It's just in the absence of multiple escrow, offers. You, right. as a listing agent, choose a partner. Uh, meaning the other who's side, close. You want the partner who is close. actually going to close, right. who you're going to have a good relationship with during that 30 day period, because there are gazillion phone calls, gazillion right. things to discuss, things, you know, you need to have, I mean, think about it. If, if day one, they don't show up with the client and they, they're not there, you don't even know who they are, what is right. their name. It's like, how am I going to chase them, track them down or do any sort right. of, or who am I going to work with here? The assistant or the admin or, or who? <laughs> right. So I have to tell you, when so, I get, when I get handed off to an admin or an assistant, ooh. I get pissed off because yeah. I want my peer, I want the list, I want the principal agent in the transaction yeah. to be the person I'm speaking with. And if they're so busy, they can't handle the load. Yeah. Maybe that's not the best person to work with. Yeah, I mean, obviously but there are many it, teams in the yeah, South where we know really the admins and the, the, uh, uh, sometimes actually I love working with admin more than the That's a good point. Agent. There are some, there are some but, lower level agents who are on teams who are great. But it's it's yeah. a small community, so we kind of know each other. Yes, so that, that's why. Okay. okay, so let's move on. So basically try to build some sort of rapport and, and, and some sort of, you know, relationship with that agent on an, on an open absolutely. house or at the showing, you know, when you have a private showing. What number are we on? Number six. Number is six. That your, um, uh, let's see. Yes. So the same thing. So, uh, I'm just going to go because it's the communication. So make sure that the agent, your agent, buyer's agent, um, has a great kind of communication rapport with the listing agent, meaning figuring it out some key points. Right. And the key points would be, okay, when you're going to review the offers, how many offers you have, if you you, if you have a good buyer's agent, right. I mean, I'm honestly, I'm really honest. I'm very transparent. So I, if somebody asks me, you know, roughly what price range you're going to go or what price range you need to come, I'm going to say a range. I'm not saying the exact name, but I say, okay, this is a million dollar listing. Let's say, well, it looks like it's going to go above. How much above? Well, closer to million one or million 50, million 25, something right. like that. You can say words like that to kind of guide, obviously, 
uh, right, but your, the your, agent. Right, but your agent should be calling up and saying, what do I need to do to get this deal? Right. And the answer is, let's say it's a million dollar house and I have five offers. Mm -hmm. I'm going to probably tell them, you need to come well above a million. Uh -huh. You need to have very short contingencies, no weird stuff in your offer, and we'll probably just accept it. But you need to make it worth the seller's while to ignore the other offers. Yes. Yeah, so and how often do we get that call? How often is the call? Those it's, it's one in twenty, one in thirty. It's very rarely. It usually right. happens actually um, because after the offer has been presented, right. you know things fall off, and right. then you have one or two kind of hanging there who are really strong right. competitors, and that's when we usually get that offer. But it's super important that your agent. You need to know. Uh, has to be a personal somebody who, who can sell you, who knows you, who wants it happen right. as much as you do. Good Number point, seven, uh, definitely um, when you, so when you, when you make the initial offer after all this information that right. your buyer's agent uh, got, you need to uh, come at a reasonable price. So you can go to extremes. Extremes usually don't kind of work oh out. Oh my God, extremes. Okay, here's the problem with extremes. Mm -hmm. They're lacking data. Mm -hmm. And on the high end of the extreme is it probably want to praise. Right. So if someone comes in with some wacky number, unless it's cash, we're now concerned, oh my God, it's not going to appraise and we're going to end up renegotiating later on because it didn't appraise. Right. So On the other end, it's based on the price being too low based on some online tool. So whether it was Zillow or you know whoever else has online mm -hmm. evaluation tools, that's one little piece of data. Your agent is the expert. Trust your, your agent's recommendation. Most, if someone's coming in super low, they're not listening to their agent. Someone's coming in super high, that might be okay. So but, for instance, let's okay. say we're talking about Late a million, me, dollar, on million dollar house, the immediate competition, we just went into escrow, we could go for a million 25 or something in the price range. Right. If you come at a $900,000 offer, it's like, what is this? Is this a joke? It's right. like, <laughs> so it, it cannot be extreme. It could be a little bit lower than a million, let's say, but it also somebody who makes an offer at million one. It's like, why? Why you need to do that? Well, let's use an example. <laughs> so we wrote an offer for a client in the last month mm -hmm. and it was a million four something, right? Uh -huh. A million four nine nine. And I think our offer was asking price. That was our starting position. We, were, we had room to go up. Mm -hmm. They didn't respond to us because the other four offers we're all well above the asking price, and they figured that we just weren't going to move. So oh, yes. we weren't, we yeah, weren't no, in the mix. That was a million nine range, yeah. I mean, it was okay, I forgot what it was. So, yeah, so much it went above right? two, two million. So, so you cannot no do extreme. So basically, that's the, the lesson here, and, and the number um, kind of seven point is don't don't go crazy. I mean, I'm not saying you need to go Well, it's not to go over. crazy. Talk to the listing agent. Your yes. agent needs to have a communication, which is what are we? where do we need to be? And if the agent tells you we need to have these terms and you know, this price range and, you know, don't have this kind of contingency, listen. And when you build a case, when you present as a buyer's agent to the listing agent, the story is like you as a buyer's agent. Uh, no, no, you as a buyer. No, as a buyer and buyer's agent, if you know the data that, oh, three homes are in escrow at the million twenty-five, right. right? Then you can explain it to the listing agent that, look, all these homes are in this price range. So our price is really kind of in this range. Right. And we just want to work with you and see, you know, right. how many offers you actually had. So the Good first point. round, I'm talking about the first round already. So now, um, number eight, very important. What was number seven? This, this uh, communication stuff. Okay, um, number eight. And the extremes. So number eight is... Uh, a, it's hugely important for me who are very organized, very neat. Why? I keep thinking about our Filipino. <laughs> so your offer needs to be as clean as possible. There are many points in an offer. Right. And personally, I hate receiving sloppy uh, offers. Well, we have two, wait, after, sloppy and smarty pan offers, right? There's either sloppy where someone hasn't taken the time to fill it out correctly. Yeah, there are many we'll of that. those. You know, we'll always work with the other agents and say, hey, you missed a box or you didn't but fill this in. But it's not that hard for somebody who makes offers to honestly do almost a perfectionist okay, offer. Okay, wait a minute. I'm a guy and I make my, my, I'm the typo king. I know. So oftentimes having multiple eyeballs on any kind of offer that's being made is great. So your agent should be having you review it. You shouldn't just sign it. Read what's been written. And buyer. if you make multiple offers, so here is the lesson for buyers. If you make multiple offers after the first one, let's say first run, if you didn't really, it didn't work out, right. you will see what the response is. Because if you get a counter offer back, 
with many sloppy mistakes, that's not good. Right. It, it's like, why? Why you need to, why I need to uh, counter back who pays for what? You know, right. it's the title, the escrow, usually seller's choice. So when you have multiple offers, you're not gonna win that game that right. you're gonna, as a buyer, you're gonna choose. Um, so make it seller choice, make it, you know, favorable to the seller or the items that you think that's for being paid, make your rate competitive. I mean, it's not that hard, honestly, you guys, to, well, there, to really do a perfectionist so offer. Every community has their own standards. So the South Bay has community standards, yeah. who pays for what, and, it, and it's pretty consistent. You go to the West side the Valley and yeah. there are different standards. So as an, as if I'm your buyer's yeah. agent. I'm going to call other agents in that community who I exactly. know are top agents. Exactly. So last year you had an agent from the West Side, super nice gal, right? Yeah, she, she was an agent from, from Compass who was great. All the time for... She, she wanted information about how things worked here in, yeah. in Manhattan Beach. And I helped her. Why not? Exactly. I mean, she, she, got, she ended up buying a multi-million dollar property for a client on Highland. Exactly. Yeah. But, you know, she called you up and, hey, what are the customary fees? And, and she's amazing because she didn't want to sound dumb. She didn't want to hurt her clients by her exactly. own lack of knowledge. Yeah. So that's what needs to be done. Absolutely. So don't allow your agent to do a sloppy offer. Right, but don't. she's she's a rare breed of agent. She yeah. went the extra step. But that's what like everybody do. should do. Everyone should absolutely. Do the same. Yeah. <laughs> so that's very important. So definitely try to do your very, very best to make almost a ninety five percent ready to go offer. Right. <laughs> okay. Now number uh, nine is um, how many offers? Yes. So when you have, when you submit these offers, right? Hopefully it didn't go to the extreme. Your agent did, you know, the communication and all this kind of relationship building. Most likely you're going to have a kind of offer back. Right. That's what you're hoping for. When you have a multiple offer situation, your hope as a buyer to get a kind of back. Right. Right. Absolutely. Most likely the counter is going to be multiple offer and uh, best and final, and then they do extra points what right. you didn't do in your offer, right? They kind of mm -hmm. does. So the, the pricing then I wanna, basically I wanna, let me inter depends interrupt. on the price. If someone listening today, and it looks like we have uh, between our different things, quite a few people listening, um, call us directly and we'll explain these, these points right now we're discussing because they, there are some nuances here. So when Diana is talking about, you know, we're hoping for a counter offer, best and final, uh, we're going to go over some language, but you're not going to remember it. Your agent yeah. should know it. I mean, you can listen to it one more time, but it's a really, what I'm going right. to say right now, it's an example in a, in a uh, counter offer that uh, is a great language for anybody, you know, should right. be using because here is the danger when it's a, a best and final. When we're talking about, think about it, a million dollar house, you don't want to lose a deal over $5,000 or right. $10,000, which is honestly nothing in your monthly payment or especially over time. Right, so wait, let's, let's talk let's like real, real quickly. Pennies right. to the dollar. Let's talk about that real quickly. I know, mm -hmm. it's, I know you hate when I go on the sidetrack. This is an important sidetrack. Uh -huh. So we have had deals not come together over $5,000, both the seller digging their feet in and the buyer. Uh -huh. To a seller, $5,000 is 5,000 real dollars. So to a seller, it's tangible. To a buyer, five thousand dollars at the end of the day is you know some tens of dollars in a monthly payment right. on a thirty-year fixed loan on a house. There is no way the average buyer is going to keep for thirty years. Right, that's the right? other thing. So we're really thing. talking about over. Let's say you keep that house you bought for seven years. Maybe we're talking about a thousand dollars, not five thousand. Right. So we're now we're we're not getting the deal to happen over a very small amount of money, not the five thousand. Is that really worth the deal not happening? Right. And you can see why the seller would dig their feet in because to them it is 5000 Of course, yeah. But to the home. And most importantly, in today's market, for the buyer, homes are appreciating. So you've actually, you're still so far ahead at the end of the day. Right. If the homes continue to appreciate. Yeah, no, absolutely. The money means nothing. So think big picture. Exactly. So I'm going to it. read two kind of counter offer language that you can use and kind of um, maybe memorize or listen back and... Uh, well, it's no, a very they, simple, these it's are kind words, of scalable, right. it's a scalable response when you're not just picking one number, it, it scales up to a limit. Right. So if what I'm saying is that let's say the house is a million dollar and you know that the direct competition is in escrow for million twenty five. So there is a chance that this particular subject house is going to go between million twenty five and million fifty, but you don't know where, right? right. And you don't want to kind of pick like, okay, million thirty. And then you kind of stuck there. And so you want the to pick language a is right because you don't want to, you know, pay over right. that much. 
So the language would be for a best and final kind of um, uh, uh, counter offer, your response is a buyer to the seller. Right. So the buyer to the seller, you're gonna say best and final price shall be, let's say million one, million 25, or a thousand, or let's say you can pick 5,000. So some or, incentive, yeah. Yeah, some incentive, or 5,000 higher than the highest competing best and final offer up to a maximum purchase price of million 50. So in this range, your offer is at million 25, your best and final, but you can go up to million 50 if with a $5,000 increment and um, and the competing offer must be written, not verbal, and copy shall be disclosed prior to your acceptance. So basically you're asking that uh, the listing agent is not cheating, there is no cheating right. going on, and you saw the, the other offer. So this language is honestly is a key part of the best and final bidding war. Right. Um, you pick a range of how high you want to be. You probably pick your bottom range as the direct competition sold in the neighborhood. Right. And you go up by a thousand or five thousand dollar increment. Right? right. So there is incentive for the seller to. It's a scaling. To, it's a scaling counter offer. For it's best a scaling counter offer, right. and I think for the seller, seller sees that you're super motivated. Right. It's just really hard to pick a number. Right. I also had another counter offer in the past, which was in the five million dollar range. This was super interesting, but it's also another way to kind of express your motivation. So in this case, the purchase price to be million fifty-three or or, or fifty thousand over any bona fide offer that is higher than million fifty-three, right. right? Up to five point four million. So basically, this agent it was a four hundred thousand dollar range, right? Which was scaled fifty thousand dollar increments, right? And then he gave examples. So for example, and you can see in the counter offer, which I really liked here, it says, as an example, if the highest competing offer is 4.9 million, right? right? So this offer is 5.5 million 53. Then the uh, Alexis offer is million 53. Right. So you scaled right there. If the highest competing offer is 5 million 175, the Alexis offer would be 5.225. So basically 5.175, right. 50,000. So he gave examples by $50,000 increments. So it went up like three fifty thousand, and then added the 50,000, right. you understand? So this is also an interesting way to, to counter offer, but well, definitely- what, what this agent tried to do was to make sure there was no ambiguity. Exactly. So we're, in a, in, we're in the business, we're in the ambiguity free zone. And if your agent is introducing ambiguity or the listing agent, it's a horrible thing. This agent wanted to say, here's what I'm offering you and here's an example of how it works. So there's no misunderstanding right. to the seller. So it was actually a great way to write it out. I think it was fantastic. When I saw it, this was the first time ever seeing it that he gave three exact pricing examples with right. the scale. But also, as I said, the first one, which I mentioned, also is works basic, simple. it's very simple. You pick your price, you pick the range and you go you know, the increments, right. $1,000, $2,000, $5,000 increments. Alrighty. So I think, you know, with these points, definitely we covered. Okay. Now let's talk about the misconceptions. Misconceptions. Yeah. So what comes to my mind, and then you can say something. Okay. I've already forgotten. What so are misconceptions, number, Diana? Misconceptions. So in a, in a, in a competitive market, buyers uh, think, they believe that by going to the listing agent and write the offer with the listing agent oh my god that's a huge them, misconception make them win the bidding war sometimes so sometimes it can only work if you as a buyer are super motivated super motivated and you listen to the agent and obviously the agent is open for that certain agents are not open to representing both buyer and seller because here is why, and I think those agents definitely respect respected, and and I respect that. Very few of them, but yeah. Very few, but it's I get that, um, and it's a really dangerous proposition because ultimately the listing agent has fiduciary duty to the seller. The seller, they have a contract right. with the seller. Absolutely, to get the highest price for their home that they're selling. Exactly. Right. So by you going to the listing agent because you want to have a bargain or you want to have a you know discounted price or you want to have a kickback or it 
never works. If your mind sinks that way, it's never going to work because right. it only works the, if, if you know that you're going to go above and how much you need to go above. Right. And you listen to the listing agent because the listing agent is going to get the highest possible price uh, for the client. The, the client, the seller, is their client. Right. You're also doing a, a strange thing. You're changing the fiduciary. The fiduciary shifts to the agent suddenly mm -hmm. because now the agent is worried about their own money. Because if you go to them and you say, I want you to represent me on this transaction, mm -hmm. they're now counting their dollars because now they represent both sides of the deal. Right. So now their their mind is shifted from doing the best deal for their client. They want to have you for the money. Exactly. But now it's all over the map and nobody's getting the best deal and except I'll contractually it's the seller. Exactly. And even we had an example like six months ago, we had a listing presentation and the seller specifically wanted to choose a small boutique agency because they know that they don't want a big firm, big right. brokerage represent both sides because they don't believe in it. And they were right because right. at the end of the day, as a human being, it's hard to kind of, uh, you know, represent both sides equally. Right. And on that particular <laughs> deal, Diana, what happened? They went, they didn't go with us. They went with a, another uh, area, small, brokerage, small yeah. quality brokerage who represented both sides, what we call dual agency. And from our math, it sold at least 50,000 above what the market supported. Right, right. So there's an example of, well, I say it's, it's inappropriate, but maybe it's not. If that buyer wanted the property. Exactly. And they have so all that's the, why I'm saying it only works if the right. buyer wants the property right. so badly and they can overpay. And they're willing to overpay. Yeah. What's our safety valve for overpaying mm -hmm. in real estate in general? Appraisal. So that our message to you as we close down this call, since we're running a little bit long, is your appraisal is your safety valve. Don't ever give away your appraisal contingency because the appraisal is a third party's opportunity to validate the number you're paying for the home is the right number. Exactly. That it works. Even if you have a cash offer, I um, I always kind of have a hard time just to see that, hey, no appraisal contingency. But right. I think it's always good to have that in the Absolutely. back of your mind that, okay, it appraised for a million bucks and I paid a million fifty, so oh well, 50,000, but right. not like, you know, a crazy amount. Right. It's just so. an important thing. Anything else we have on our, on our hit parade, no. Diana? This is my take on this, but what, any, any, any other additional? Oh, I'm exhausted. Ooh, this is a hard one. No, I think, I think these are, you know, it's a, it's a lesson that I don't think any home buyers think about. Yes. So there I mean, are home buyers, you know, home buyers who are anal are on their agents like crazy. What's yeah. going on? What's going on? Yeah. And they trust their agent, which they should, mm -hmm. but sometimes maybe they shouldn't. And you learn quickly. If you're making offers and not getting the offer and you're doing what the agent says to do and you're still not getting the offer, you probably have the wrong agent. If you're doing what you think you should do and demand the agent do it, well, maybe the agent has the wrong client. Yeah. So the idea here is trust your agent. And the yeah, and, and be motivated and, and, and be aware of what's going on, right. what's happening and what, what is the trend, what prices, you know, people pay for. Right. And I think do your very best always, but don't, yeah, the, the bargaining is not happening in a multiple, right. you know, offer situation. And the final thing, I guess, is don't stick to the square footage number as your matrix for pricing. Yeah. It's one of 20 things. Exactly. Yeah. Alrighty, that's it for today. Exciting and go out and uh, win some wars. Yeah, win some wars. Be a rebel. It's <laughs> the game of thorns. Yeah, game Continue. of thorns. So, yeah. um, our new word of the day is be a rebel on all be fronts. Be a rebel. Yes. Be a rebel. Well. Disrupt. Be a rebel. Get the deal that you want. Get the house that you want. Make it happen. Exactly. Fight for it.